Hey everyone! Welcome to Shisai Network's ITO4 Foundation course. I'm Fang Fei, your primary instructor for this course. Let me start with a quick introduction about myself. At Shisai Network, I specialize in a few key areas. First, software development and network engineering. Next, IT support like what you guys do as technicians. In communications, I cover basic protocols and intermediate internet tech. Now, in the context of the ITO4 Foundation, these topics are more like specialized branches. It's similar to what happens after completing basic education. When you get to university level, you choose specific areas that interest you. I'll look into it more. Now about the ITO4 Foundation. It's actually a comprehensive service knowledge management framework. It covers a wide range of areas, including ones we've talked about, like network engineering and internet tech. All of these are part of it. It's like an advanced level diving deeper into technical approaches and practical project deployment stuff like that so when we're learning the ito4 foundation course we need to focus on two key areas first let's focus on the course itself what's the main objective of this course we can sum it up in three key words first exam second passing third certification this is our primary focus so it's geared towards exam preparation Throughout this course, our learning methods and teaching style will focus more on what's actually on the exam, how it's assessed, how to memorize the content, these three aspects. First, second, looking ahead, after completing the ITO4 foundation course, how to apply it in real life or in project work in other areas. How do I go about this? This can't be fully covered in just one class. It requires further research and learning you'll need to explore further on your own. When it comes to career paths, we have three main options. First, there's project management, which is extremely hot right now. PMP certification and PRINCE2 methodology. The second path is our ITO4 framework. For those wanting to go further, there are intermediate and advanced ITO4 levels, known as the NPSL series. You can give it a shot. The third is the technical theory covered by the instructor. Here in our country, the software systems they've been researching, or more specifically, the communication systems, are areas you might want to explore. That's what we have here. This is the future of the field. Okay, so let's get back to our lesson. Our main goal is to get certified, right? So let's examine the entire ITO4 Foundation curriculum. What's actually on the test? So how does it work? Well, first off, let's check out how they assess you. The whole thing's done online, from scheduling to picking a spot. It's all web-based. You just need one computer, that's it. Then, you'll have an online proctor who'll check your setup. Once that's done, they'll give you the go-ahead. You can start the exam now. You've got one hour, okay? That's just 60 minutes. You'll tackle 40 multiple choice questions. Now, these 40 questions are all single choice. One question, one answer, one point. If you score 26 or higher, you've passed. Plus it's a, as soon as you're done, you'll get your score report instantly. That's the kind of exam we're talking about. So, compared to software certification and telecom exams, this one's more flexible with time and place. Plus the waiting time is pretty short too. The only thing you'll wait for is your certificate to arrive. That's the first advantage. Now for the second one. Now let's review the key points of the exam syllabus. All the specifics, the complete syllabus, is divided into five sections. We'll cover all five. In these sections, the key focus is on first, practical skills, and second, systems knowledge. These are the main points. Other topics are less emphasized. Let's review each part. Let's start with chapter one. Now regarding chapter one, it's basically a classic intro. Let's check it out. It barely counts towards your final score. Really, it's just a quick overview of what we'll learn in ITOS and what we can gain from it. You know, it's value the whole certification process and its story from start to finish. So that's about it for this part. Now moving on to the second part, we'll dive into a detailed explanation of the key concepts in service management. Now these key concepts, when you really think about it, are basically just fancy definitions. You could call it industry lingo if you will. You know how it is when people talk, especially when they're, you know, experts in their field. They start throwing around all this highfalutin language. It sounds pretty stuffy, doesn't it? But you know what? There's always a simpler way to say things. Don't you think? Okay, let's break it down. What we're really talking about here is industry standards. 
like what do we mean by service management, or the concept of service relationships. And then there's the value chain, value stream processes. We also touched on costs and all that stuff. You know, part of what they're claiming is value, right? Like effectiveness or usefulness and stuff like that. So what's the tricky part? It's that it's been translated from English. From English, you know, there are bound to be some similar words, some slight differences. So if you've got a solid grasp of the language, that's ideal. You'd be better off checking the English version. If you do that, when you translate it back, you're less likely to make big mistakes. On the other hand, with Chinese, there are tons of words with similar meanings, which is kind of weird. Even when it comes to words like results and outcomes, you've got to be able to tell them apart. So this section is mostly about understanding nouns and how to define them. Now, when it comes to the test scores, these five marks are pretty straightforward. It's mainly about identifying which options describe the efficacy or which ones describe the function. It's about providing explanations, focusing on key term comprehension. Let's check out the question types. That should be enough to pass. Moving on, we have chapters three and four. Now about chapters three and four, they actually build on the basics from chapter one. Take this point for instance, it's not testing the historical development. You see, instead this point is definitely about what's included in ITOS. The ITOS course covers several dimensions, primarily three. First off, we have four aspects. Next up, we have the value system. And third, we've got practice. These are our three main areas. Interestingly, practice can be considered part of the value system itself. On that note, we'll cover specific activities and procedures. So in the third and fourth sections, we'll focus on the structure itself. Let's start by examining the value system. The value system is absolutely key. Therefore, it carries a bit more weight in the overall score. It's worth about eight points out of the total. Now let's dive into its value system. We'll look at its key components. Each component has its own set of specific details to consider. Take the guiding principles, for instance. What are the steps involved? What defines each step? This starts to branch out further. It keeps expanding. Moving on, let's look at our entire service offering. To put it into practice, let's consider my service plan. It needs to be implemented effectively. Think of it like a table. A good table needs to be stable, functional, and have four legs. Similarly for a service plan to work, it also needs four key components. These four elements consist of, so it comes down to four dimensions. First, organization and personnel. Second, information and technology. Third, business partners and suppliers. Lastly, value streams and processes. Each dimension's meaning and scope will be explained here. However, these four dimensions won't be explained in great detail. Instead, they're more about, in reality, it's more about specific project consultations. They might ask about your company's IT service maturity, or more specifically, an assessment of your current IT service capabilities. They'd ask, what level has your company reached? Or what tier are you at? It's similar to how we assess countries, like developed nations or developing ones. You know what I mean? There's always some criteria for evaluation, isn't there? It's not a decision you can make on a whim, right? So where should I begin? This is where the four dimensions come in. I can approach this from four dimensions using what we call the 4P model. Let me break it down for you. First, I need to understand your company's IT positioning or its core objectives. Then, let's begin by applying the 4P model to assess your company's structure. We'll look at your current team makeup and evaluate its maturity level. Next, we'll review your workflow strategies to check their effectiveness and identify potential improvements. We'll grade each aspect. Then we'll analyze your product and tech portfolio, including your IT assets and equipment status. Lastly, we'll evaluate your partnerships, including factors like partner reliability to evaluate these aspects. This helps assess your IT service maturity or overall IT capabilities. These are the four key areas we'll focus on. As we explore these four dimensions, we'll clarify what they are, their significance, and how to apply them. From a modeling standpoint, it's a simple binary approach. A quick overview should do for now. Then we'll dive a bit deeper. The next step after that is Hansen practice. Out of all the chapters, chapter five is by far the most critical. It's worth a whopping 24 points on the test. Here's the thing. The test is out of 40 points and you need 26 to pass. A full 24 points come from chapter five alone. So what's the takeaway here? Nail chapter five and you're golden. Among the concepts we've covered, scoring just two points is enough to pass. So it's an incredibly easy section to ace. 
Now about this practical part. In the earlier versions, such as the VR version or the V3 release, it wasn't labeled as practice, but rather processes and functions. It essentially covered what to do. In a practical sense, let's say we've outlined a broad framework. For instance, I might tell you, I own a factory, and this factory in general terms should be like this. It should produce something. It should reach a certain goal. All of this is incredibly vague. It's all just like what we call pie in the sky. It's that kind of thing. Don't you agree? But we need to turn this idea into reality. Then you need to get people to accept it and ensure they're satisfied with it. It involves specific processes and steps. You see what I mean? This involves actual people doing the work. It's about working methods, specific skills, and various procedures. All of this needs gradual implementation. And these practical aspects, let's refer to this as practical application, or simply practical application. Now let's discuss these practical elements. Are all of these elements equally valuable? According to the exam syllabus, there are two key points about practical application. The first point is to understand all 34 EDO's management practices. That's 34 in total. The second point is to master the 18 key ITOS management practices. So what's the point? Well, in theory, I've already explained it to you. There are 34 practical steps in total. You can pick from these, but realistically only 18 of them are essential. We call these the key success factors. Think of it like this. It's kind of like, it's similar to how we teach network engineering. There are two key concepts in network engineering. Just a basic grasp is enough. One is the OSI model. The other one is TCP IP. You'll probably come across this more frequently, especially if you're in the IT field. Now regarding OSI, it's a seven layer model. On the other hand, TCP IP uses a four layer structure. Throughout this course, we'll be looking at two main concepts, the theoretical model and the practical implementation. Let's start with the theory. And this represents reality. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, I see. Okay, let's break it down even more. Let's use a company as an example. So here's the deal. I want to start a company. I hired a consultant to help with the planning. The consultant tells me, if you want to start a company, you need to go by the book. And according to this book, your company's organizational structure and staff composition should have seven levels. First level, top management. Second level, executive assistants. Third level, operational departments and staff. Fourth level, reception. Fifth level, you've got to have your own logistic system, right? Hold on, hold on a sec. Let me break it down for you. Once that's done, let's say you're just starting a company. You're just starting out. Your investment's under a million. So tell me, why on earth would you need a whole team of secretaries? A secretary's job versus management work? Aren't we in this together? It's not really necessary for me. So I need to make choices. The essentials I can't do without. The non-negotiables. You know what I mean? Just keeping it simple and straightforward. As for the less essential stuff. Down the line, once we've grown enough, I'll add those in. No big deal. Okay, now about these 34 items I mentioned. They're actually quite similar to the seven layer model we discussed earlier. What I'm saying is, to build a fully developed and comprehensive system, you might need all 34 components. But in practice, when you're just starting, or the bare essentials you need, might be just 18 components. Let's say about 15. That's the number you're looking at. Once you've got those sorted, you'll be up and running. As you keep going, you might find that as you grow to a certain size and things are going well, you can start adding more. But how do you do that? Well, you can start with the 34 and choose which ones to add next. So that's the gist of it. It breaks it down into two categories. First, there are 34 to be familiar with. Second, 18 to master thoroughly. So let's get acquainted with these. It's actually easier than you might think. The main thing is to concentrate on these 18 or more precisely 15 of them. Focus on understanding these essentials. For the others, I'll just give a quick. Let me provide some additional context and explanation. That should do it. You don't need to memorize this stuff. Just familiarize yourself with these terms. That's pretty much it. All right. Now let's look at our exam. Here's a breakdown of the exam content. This should give you a good overview. Also, you can use the score weightings to plan your study schedule. All right. Now let's dive into our first section.